Hi, here's Wild and Crazy Nature Girl from Sex and the Beach. I'm here with Ron Rosar of the U.S. Geological Survey, and uh, would you like to introduce us to your friend here? And here we have the famous Burmese python, or maybe I should say infamous. This is the guy that's been all over South Florida. Now, I just spent some time with Ron at the, uh, what's the Florida Keys uh, Crocodile? The Nature Crocodile Reserve? Lake National Wildlife Refuge. And um, while I was there, I interviewed him, and uh, he gave me so much information about this problem we have down here with these, this invasive species. Um, when was the first one found? So the first python was found in 1979 in Everglades National Park. Now since then, periodically they've sprung up, but it hasn't been until the mid to late 90s where the populations have really blossomed. They finally made their way down to the Keys in 2007. And since 2007, we've actually collected 14 Burmese pythons in Key Largo alone. Now you mentioned that most of these pythons were um, moving from the mainland to North Key Largo, mostly males looking for mates. Yes, so we have an established population down in Florida City, so just at the southern tip of the Florida mainland. Now, those animals, some of them are moving southward into Key Largo. We also always have the, the issue of, of animals that uh, escape captivity or are intentionally released. Now, tell us about the, the wood rat that is being particularly affected by the presence of this animal. So in Key Largo, we have an endangered species, the Key Largo wood rat. Now, the very first python that was detected in Key Largo was detected by wood rat researchers who were doing telemetry work and they tracked one of their rats to the belly of a python. When we looked at the stomach contents of that python, we actually found that there was a second wood rat in there as well. Now there's only about 200 wood rats in the whole world in Key Largo. So two of them actually represents a, a significant percentage of their population. And it's easy to see where a big python like this uh, can mow through a population of wood rats in, in a very short time. So, so there's only, uh, this particular species of wood rat only exists in Key Largo? Yes. And there's the, only about 200? Yes, the Key Largo wood rat only found in Key Largo, actually the north part of Key Largo, and only about 200. So that's a really specific biological niche right there. Right. And tell us, uh, what are you guys doing to um, take care of this problem? So unfortunately, there's no silver bullet strategy for getting rid of pythons. Uh, so we incorporate a, a number of strategies. We do live trapping where we sit traps out and we collect animals. We also do survey work for finding animals that are along roadways or out in the water. Uh, we also do a lot of public education, uh, making sure that everybody's aware of the issue because really the public, they're going to be the ones that can really help us out. Uh, as far as a few biologists, yes, we, we can make a difference, but if we have tens of thousands of people out there with their eyes on the road looking for these and reporting them when they see them, that's going to go a long way to solving this yeah, problem. Yeah, you know, I, I went to Ladies Let's Go Fishing about a month ago or so, and um, the Florida Wildlife Commissioners there said, you know, they're, they're not the commissioners, we are. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a wildlife commissioner in South Florida, and exactly. actually all of Florida, um, to be aware and, and you know, report these animals, and and you were saying that sometimes you find them on the 18-mile stretch coming from Florida City to Key Largo. Um, you you found pythons just on the road, right? Because they like the asphalt and the heat. Right. So so snakes are are ectothermic, or what we used to call cold-blooded, and. One of the ways that we find snakes is we do road surveys. We'll go out cruising along the roadways. And the reason why roads are attractive for snakes is that when the air temperature drops a little bit at night, you know, these guys want to stay as warm as possible. The warmer they are, the faster they move, the better they can feed. So they'll go out on the roads and collect some of that, that ambient heat from the asphalt, which retains that heat for quite a while. So at night, you'll see a lot of these out. These as well as other snakes out on the road. And we use this to our advantage where we drive around, when we see them on the road, we can run out of the truck and pick them up, bag them, and go on our way. I never thought about that. <laughs> okay, so, so um, you know, Miami is a hub for the uh, in importation of exotic animals from around the world. We've in Miami and Miami International Airport. 
Um, what can the average person do to educate themselves about owning a snake? Is there a good resource and, and what kind of snake you should and shouldn't own? And you talked about permitting, right, for, for right. these animals? So the, the first thing you want to do, of course now you can hop on the internet, look up things, get information, read books, talk to people, uh, do your homework. A lot of these snakes, which actually now, in order to own a Burmese python in Florida, you are required to have a permit prior to actually purchasing the animal. But if you were to get this species or another species, you'd, you'd want to know everything about it, how large it gets, how much time and effort goes into maintaining it. Because you go into a pet shop and you see a two-foot snake that, that's nice and pretty, cheap, Hold it up, hold it up. You'll, uh, it, it's easy to see why a lot of people would want to purchase this. Yeah, this now, is not a furry, cuddly little thing. <laughs> but a year, two, three years down the road, this is an animal that's 10, maybe even 12, 15 feet long. So, um... A big animal like that requires a lot of specialized caging, it requires a lot of food, which costs something. And then the more food you put in one end, the more comes out the other end. So there's a lot of maintenance involved with keeping a, a big snake yeah, like this. Yeah, they're high maintenance. Um, well, thank you, Ron. Can I touch it for a second? You can hold him if you want. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Was hissy. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not squeamish about this, but I don't. I don't think. He, I don't think he likes me. Now you use this snake for. Um, for training purposes, right? You train yes. uh, rapid responders. There's actually a hotline you can call if you find one of these on anywhere, actually any kind of exotic, right? Right. In the so, Keys. So in, in the Florida Keys, if you see a Burmese python or you see any exotic, fish, reptile, bird, you name it. Anything lionfish. that does it. Lionfish. If you see something that doesn't belong, the number is 1-888-I've-GOT-1. That's one 888 I've got one, like you got one. You call that up and report an animal that, that you're seeing right now, or if it's even something that you saw in the past while you're driving home. Um, all that information is really helpful to us in, in trying to keep the keys safe from invasive species like this and the other ones that, that are currently threatening the keys. And by invasive, he does not mean tourists. <laughs> <laughs> we like our tourists in Florida. Yeah, right. So, and I, I will say, we have lots of pythons here, but the chances of you actually seeing one are, are relatively slim. So, tourists, keep coming to South Florida. Yes, please. It's not like you're going to see one of these. <laughs> Unl unless you come see me, and, and I'll take you out to a place where we can find some. Thank you, Ron. Thank you.